twisting, turning further from my home. Young, like a new moon rising, fierce through the rain and lightning, wandering out into this great unknown. And I don't want no one to cry, but tell them. Ray Carnicelli from Lax904.com here with the head coach of the JV Dolphins, Coach John Galloway. How you doing today? Doing great. Good, good to have you back. Your first practice, ready to go? It is. It's our first official fall ball practice. You, know, you told yeah. everyone to uh, be ready uh, when, the, when the fall ball starts, uh, conditioned, ready to go, focused. These guys ready? Yeah, you know, we've had all September to get our guys into this great shape, and they've been lifting four days a week, running three days a week, individual work. So right now, I think the terminology is starting to become a little bit more comfortable. Now it's, now it's can they do a full speed? Well, I was kidding around with you last week about uh, have you memorized all the players' names. So, how many new guys? We have 25 freshmen and five transfers. Okay, so 30 new guys, and you do you do know all the names? I do, I do. I got them back down. I've had to study my Excel sheets, but uh, I came in obviously. They don't have tape on their helmets. No, no, I'm too good for that. A um, couple questions before we talk about these guys. Busy, busy summer. You got you were engaged? I was. I was yeah, right at the end of June, I uh, asked my then girlfriend, my fiance, and uh, she said yes. Awesome. So you had uh, MLL in the playoffs. You had a trip to Israel on a gold medal and a, and a thriller. Yeah. Uh, probably some recruiting mixed in. Yeah. yeah. So tell me about the summer. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it's, it's seven days on, that's for sure. You know, to have a chance to train with Team USA, that was such a blessing, but it took a lot of time. You know, we had three weeks in Israel, we had a week of training weeks prior to that, traveling on the weekends for the MLL, and then fitting in as much recruiting as I could in June. Uh, because one July I came around, that was, I was pretty much out of the country. So I'd asked you before about your relationship with Coach Donowski. I assume you played against him when he was coaching and you were at Syracuse? Uh, yes, for one year. Yeah. One year. So you coached with him, you coached against him, and you played for him. Tell me about Coach Donowski and, and that Team USA team because it seems special to me. You've been on a lot of great teams. Tell me about him and that team. Yeah, you know, the best way I can describe it, there's 23 guys that weren't really friends. Uh, strangers and to have a chance to spend three weeks with them and really on the last day to, to honestly call them brothers. I mean, it was something that only Coach Ronowski could have put together. The team building that we did, the chemistry we created, uh, and his entire coaching staff really was a part of that. Uh, I probably got the most professional development just watching that staff work over three weeks and really bringing the team together. You've got a mission here that uh, you're trying to accomplish something very similar with these guys. Exactly. And the fortunate part for us is we have a full year to do that. Uh, and with a young group, I think that the challenge is out for us to, to get to get these guys in the fold as quickly as possible. And uh, they've been excited about the opportunity, but it takes a little bit of to get them going with college speed. Well, it was a wild ride in the MLL. You made it to the, to the finals. Um, just tell me about your relationship with the city of Dallas, because it seems pretty interesting. You've got a few impact players out here. Tell me about the lacrosse scene in, in Dallas to you. Dallas yeah. has taken off. You know, I have a few friends in the high school coaching world there, so when we got moved, I had a chance to reach out to them, and that's how the guys were pretty fun out of Texas. And uh, just the, the support we had, it was a professional event. We played for the, you know, essentially for the Cowboys of lacrosse, and they took care of us. I uh, felt like a pro. And we got picked up, and it was an experience unlike any other I've had in MLL, and uh, certainly something that we cherish this past season. Well, I haven't been back on campus since the end of lacrosse season, and I'm, I'm looking around. Right here, we've got the beautiful new building that I'll, I'll get some pictures of, uh, the Welcome Center. I didn't even know that was coming, and it's beautiful. Tell me about the contract extension. Congratulations. We're thrilled uh, to, to have you staying. Um, and the transformation and the transformational leadership of uh, President Austin. Uh, yeah, you know, my, my staff, this is the, the people around my administrators, my boss, Alex, and President Boss, really came to me in the middle of the season. And that's when you know you have guys ahead of your back. Before you, at the end of the year, I think they saw what we were building and they believed in us as a coaching staff and as a program. And uh, we started to negotiate that. So it was a no brainer for me. If you look around, a lot of things you just mentioned are the reason why I'm here. Not so much the actual building, but just the growth of the school. 4,000 square feet of hospital down by the river. We're going to welcome some of the new players on the basketball practice facility is going to start with the kids. And then obviously most notably for us, uh, the cross only facility for the men's and cross that uh, will be completed in the November. So your relationship with, with Duval, North Florida, I know that there's a River City Lacrosse Club organization that uh, provides some mentoring. 
uh, business uh, contacts to the players and the entire community. You're going to be speaking with them. Yeah. That, on top of your relationship with so many of the coaches, coaches playing this ball, tell me about uh, your relationship with this ball. Yeah, I think our job, that's our job as an individual program in Florida, is to make sure that the people around you feel like they can. Yeah. 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 It's our job to go out and do the same for them. So we're going to, we're going to go out to a couple of high school practices. We're going to bring them back here. We're going to make sure that we're as accessible as possible. And when that facility opens up, we're going to make sure it feels like they're home. So fall ball, uh, pretty packed schedule. You've got Rollins in the middle coming in. You've got the world's largest outdoor cross party. And uh, the alumni have been chirping that they've got a pretty good squad. How important is it for you to have a competitive alumni game? Um, from a cultural standpoint as well as a competitive preparation standpoint. Yeah, I think for us to, to make sure we're building the family is important, but that's why we moved it to Friday night. We want the guys to get here Friday or early during the day and come ready to play. Our guys need to see what the other guys stand for. It was one of the letters that our players wrote this past weekend, but uh, those guys are tough. Uh, they might not have been five-star recruits, but they were fearless, and that's the way that this, this program is built on. The foundation of the program. So, two captains at this point? We have three captains, three captains. and just about 15 minutes ago, we elevated Evan Tyler. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, the two local guys, Eric Applegate and Caden LaVange, what went into the decision, the team's decision, your decision, uh, to make those two local guys that we're very proud of, because I've watched them play yeah. since they were little, uh, why are they captains? Yeah. I think the best part about those two is they lead in such a Aiden is such a quiet assassin and he just leads by example. Eric Applegate has really become a leader on this team because he's willing to put his arm around the young guys' shoulders and explain to them what they might be doing wrong or complimenting them what they're doing right. Those two guys lead in such different ways that uh, our, our young guys realize that they go to farm and uh, they earn it from their peers. It really was an approach to see. And Evan Tyler's path to captaincy has uh, had some peaks and valleys, but I know you were uh, particularly impressed with his maturity and his ability to excel last season. Season. Yeah, it was one of the guys that I'm probably the most proud of just from an uh, off-the-field standpoint, how much he's grown up. And uh, this fall, more than any other, he's really taken the next step. Uh, obviously, his physical condition is great, his play is great. But it's more so how he's made sure that the freshmen understand our expectations. He's really an essential position. Who's the fourth? Uh, that would be Dixon Smith. Okay. Uh, soft, soft. So out here we got the guys doing some uh, conditioning. I, I, I'm not a recruit, recruitment. I don't care where they came from. I don't care what teams they played on. I want to watch. Them. I want to see who flashes. There are some of the guys that I might expect to see flash that I haven't seen play before. Yeah, I think the guy that's probably excited the coaches the most so far from uh, the freshman attack and from Baltimore and uh, has really has the physicality of the division one athlete. Played running back in football in high school. Understands the game a little bit better than we expected. So he has really shown some flashes. Uh, same guy on the attack end, David Cosmic. Skinny, small, but just scores goals. Uh, and then on the defensive end, we've been impressed with two freshmen. Uh, Jordan Young, who is an original Michigan player, is now with us. And Jackie from Seattle has been a really pleasant surprise. His physicality and his development have shown that he might be ready for a show pretty early in this play. How do you feel about your goalie yeah. position? You know, right now we're a little bit nicked up on small, small things. We had a, a tooth injury, so Selzy's out for a couple days with a tooth. Right. And, uh, Do I need to gear up? <laughs> yeah, we, we, might, we actually only have two today, surprisingly enough. Uh, Adam Baker actually just got an infection in his foot, so uh, two or three days small injuries, but both of those guys came back ready to perform. And Maddie Sugita is a freshman from one and has come in and has opened the eyes of a lot of guys on his team. And, uh, smaller in stature, but uh, maybe the most poised in the game. So this fall, world's largest outdoor lacrosse party uh, last year was, was awesome. What do you expect this year? I think we've elevated the roster a little bit, especially in the defense. So we're going to have the uh, so MVP of the world's largest outdoor party, Andre Wood, Josh Sersky, and uh, Matt Dunn, who's the defenseman of the year in the MLL. On the attack end, we're going to have Dorian Wolf and Randy Stotts and uh, a lot of big athletic people. So, we'll have we'll okay, awesome. I know he, he's had fun the last couple times down. So. He has, and we'll have him back. And he's been a big reason why we haven't been able to pull it out. And uh, he's actually has some, he does have some commitment to the Philadelphia Wings, but right now, kind of he's playing. So looking forward into the into the spring, the, the schedule. What are some of the highlights in your mind for the schedule, and can we expect uh, the most to continue its upward trajectory? Exactly. The most classic was one of the first objectives of our staff to make sure we come down the campus. So we'll have Michigan down here for the most classic. Uh, and then our scrimmages are exciting. We're going to play UNC down here.
as well as the local school, Angry Royal, to get some of our young ladies experience. We're going to play Tampa again, and then we're going to have, we're going to have the big guys. We're going to have Duke and Mark Cat and Drexel down here, and we'll also have uh, you know, a couple of exciting games in Charlotte, Penn State, and Tyler's. Oh, wow. The schedule's going to be tough. It'll be out soon. Uh, but those teams are definitely going to challenge us to be able to so far. Is the opponent for the most locked in going to be announced or kind of keeping in your pocket to them? Yeah, so the, week, the, the dates and times are still fluctuating, but we're going to play Michigan back here. Awesome. Yeah. So, Coach, um, these guys coming off of last year, we were expecting, um, you know, didn't quite get over that Southern Conference yeah. Championship pump. Is this team prepared and are they capable from the talent and physicality level to do that? That's that goal. Yeah, I think from the talent level, we're, we're definitely there. It's, uh, it's going to be an experience. Uh, we lose guys like um, Clint and Brian, and we lose guys like Clint Rose, but even guys that are maybe on some here with the next hard times of the world, and uh, Ryan Bevels, guys that made plays that might have been invisible to the fan, but those are the plays that seem to make a big game. So we're going to have to replace those guys with some young blood, but I don't think they're afraid of change. That's not about the attitude for the local What's your message to the uh, followers of Jacksonville University, the cross, the, the new branding, everything that's going on here on campus, and what can they expect out of the 2018-2019 Dolphins? I think that you're going to see a continuation of attitude, you know, a continuation of a team that wants to represent this region. Uh, they're going to play for us, and we've asked them to do one thing this fall, is to not be afraid to make mistakes, to not be afraid to take chances. Uh, you're going to see a level of toughness on the defensive end. Well, Coach, it's exciting to be out here. I'm looking forward to watching the guys play, and uh, thanks for having me out. Of course. All right, thanks, Coach. Well, I went to church last Sunday So I could sing and pray But something quite unusual Happened on that day the church, it started right on time Just to, like it does without a doubt And everything was all just fine Except when it came time to let us out You know the preacher, he kept preaching He told us, I have one more thing to say Children, before you think of leaving You better think about the judgment day yeah. Now, everyone got nervous Because of Everyone was a hunger too Everyone was wondering What was the next thing he would do And the, the preacher he kept preaching He said now I remind you If I may you all better pay attention Or I